What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to edit a time lapse from start to finish. We're going to jump into my computer screen. I'm going to show you every single thing. I'm going to show you two different ways on how to do the workflow. The first one being going through Lightroom, exporting your images, and then putting them into After Effects. And the second way is going to be directly editing your raw images in After Effects where all of the workflow is there. So if you're only interested in one or the other, I'm going to put the time codes for each. So here's the time code for editing in Lightroom, taking that into After Effects and that whole workflow. And here's the timestamp for just going through After Effects and Adobe Camera Raw. So hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump right into this. All right, so to do this in Lightroom, we're gonna come over and currently we're in our library tab, come down to import, and you're gonna find your images on your hard drive. So I'm gonna edit one from Iceland. So I've got my folders, and I'm gonna do one of the shipwreck. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing, guys, is turning all of these still frames into a short video. The video equates essentially to one second for every 24 photos, so it ends up being 24 frames a second. So you know, if you took 100 photos, that's gonna be a four second time lapse, roughly. If you took 400 photos, it's gonna be roughly a 16 second time lapse. So depending on how long you're looking to make your time lapse, that'll kind of decide how long you're gonna be shooting for. You can see right here, uh, I shot this for 175 photos. Uh, but yeah, for organization purposes, I like to put, as you can see right here in my Iceland time-lapse folder, all of these are separate time-lapses. And this is really, really important for organization. Otherwise, if you put all your time-lapses in one folder, it's gonna be a wreck. You want to have a your own folder for every single time-lapse. So I have all of my images checked. I'm gonna click import. So it looks like it imported a photo that was already edited. I think this might have been something I did the other day. So I'm just going to actually delete that uh, just to not make this confusing. But yeah, so I'm on my first image. Now I'm gonna come over to my develop tab. And this is right here, essentially just gonna be editing a photo. So this photo is a raw image. The dimensions are 6,000 by 4,000. So this is essentially like a 5K quality image which is the standard for a 24 megapixel camera. But the ability to be able to color a photo raw and turn that into a video, you're gonna have such better color, such better quality, such better detail than if this was, say, a 4K video. While 4K video is extremely high quality, um, having the ability to shoot this raw really changes the, what you're able to do with it. So I'm just gonna do a base Lightroom edit. Shot this over sunset. That looks good. So I can do the backslash key to kind of see the before and after. I think that looks incredible. So now that we have our first photo highlighted, I'm going to slide all the way to the end, hold shift down and click my last frame. And then I'm gonna come up here to the sync button. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna sync every single edit that I have checked, which is everything. Um, and it's going to apply that edit to every single photo in this folder. So synchronize, and you can see up here, it's gonna take a second. But this kind of does all the heavy lifting for you. You know, you only have to edit one photo, and then just by synchronizing your edit, boom, every single photo in your time lapse is gonna have the exact same edit to it. And from here, we can export these images and then we're gonna be taking them into After Effects. All right, so now that that is finished and the edit is synchronized on all of our photos, all of the photos are still highlighted as you guys can see. So now I'm just gonna come up to File, Export, and then I'm just gonna create a folder to put these in. So I'm gonna put them in Iceland, Time Lapse, Choose, and then I'm gonna put in a subfolder called Shipwreck Iceland JPEG uh, Tutorial Export. And this is gonna take a few minutes because you know you're gonna be exporting 175 images. I'm also screen recording as I'm doing this, so this is gonna take quite a bit. 
But, so you're exporting these photos to JPEG, so all the coloring and everything is done. So the next step is to take all of these photos into After Effects and then we're gonna merge them into a short video. And it's gonna be a little bit easier on After Effects as far as processing goes, solely because it's gonna be importing JPEGs that already have the edit on them, opposed to putting the raw as an After Effects, which I'll show you guys later in the video. So now that all of our images exported in Lightroom, I've got After Effects pulled up, just a blank project. Um, if you're unfamiliar with After Effects, it is quite a bit intimidating. And to be honest, I only use After Effects pretty much for time lapses. There's a few other things, but pretty rarely am I on After Effects. Uh, so if you're only gonna be using this for tutorials, just follow these steps. It'll be super easy, super pain free. Uh, but essentially right here is your import window. So you either are gonna double click that or come down to file import. I'm just gonna double click here and then gonna find our JPEG images that we exported earlier. All right. So here are all the edited images, they're colored, they're JPEG, so they're a little bit smaller in file size than if they were raw, which will help on processing these. So I'm gonna click the first image, scroll down, hold shift, click the last image so they're all highlighted, and you want create composition checked, and you want importer JPEG sequence checked. Then we're gonna click open. What checking those two boxes did is the first and most important right here is that it put all of our photos into a video. And secondly, it created a sequence for us, but that is only a one click step. So if it had not, all you're gonna do is pretty much drag this down here. So checking those boxes just saves you a step there. But now this is down here in your sequence, but you're gonna render through every single frame on your time lapse, as you can kind of see it scrubbing through slowly. If there's some shake, you know, if it was windy, if your tripod was moving subtly, you're gonna come over here to effects and presets, type in warp stabilizer, and you would take this and drag it on top of your clip, and it would take a few minutes to analyze. You would see a window over here pop up under effect controls, and it would take just a few minutes to analyze, but we're not gonna do that just because I don't think this time lapse needs it. Uh, we'll see once this is fully done rendering and loading. But yeah, again, if you do need to use Warp Stabilizer, you just drag it right on top. So once this green line gets all the way to the end, we'll be able to watch this through without the scrubbing and kind of the inching frame by frame through this. And we'll, we'll be able to see finally all of our images colored and brought into a single video. All right, let's see how this plays out. Super smooth and clean. It's playing back a little bit slow because I'm screen recording and my Mac doesn't have the best processing power, but that looks like a really, really clean time lapse. No need for warp stabilizer or anything. Uh, that looks awesome. So just kind of for organization, um, anytime I'm doing a time lapse in here, I'm gonna file, save this, and you know where you save it is up to you guys. I'm gonna save it in my Iceland projects folder though as we'll just call this shipwreck time-lapse tutorial. And here is kind of the few buttons that you'll need to follow relatively closely to export this at the proper settings. So I'm gonna show you how to export this to a QuickTime file so you can put this into Premiere, you can put it into Final Cut, you can post it directly to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Um, so, you know, we're gonna come up here to composition, add, oops, add to render queue, and then you're gonna get this pop-up window down here. Right here's our sequence, and right here's the render queue that we just added this to. So render settings right here, you're never gonna to touch that. Log, errors only, you're never gonna to touch that either. As long as they say that, you're good. And right here, output module, what we are looking for is Apple ProRes 422 HQ. So we're gonna to come to format options, video codec, put this to Apple ProRes 422HQ. Nothing else here, don't worry about it, just click OK. And as long as all of your settings look like my screen right here, all you have to do is click OK. So all we had to do is put Apple ProRes 22HQ. 99% of you will already default have all these settings, so that's the only thing you need to do, click OK, good to go. And then output two, we're gonna click that. 
And this is essentially just where you want to save your time lapse to. So I'm going to put this in the time lapse folder with the JPEGs. And I'm just going to call this 5K Shipwreck Colored TL Save. And all we have to do to export this is hit this render button right here. And then we're just going to watch this blue bar go across the duration of the screen all the way to here. And once it has done that, it's fully exported. And then from there, you can just quit After Effects. So I'm going to give this a few minutes, but that's pretty much it, guys. All right, guys. So for the second way to edit a time lapse, I'm just going to show you guys real quick. It's essentially the exact same workflow, but you're going to be working with raw images instead of JPEGs. And we're not going to be touching Lightroom. We're just going to be touching Adobe After Effects. So if we're in an empty project file, I'm going to double click on the import window, find our time lapse folder with the raw images straight out of camera, which are right here. And you're going to click your first image. I've done this before, so it has a metadata file. I'm just going to go past that one. Um, shift, click your last one. Make sure you have create composition check and camera raw sequence. Um, on the last one, it says JPEG sequence. Same thing, just have them both checked. Open. And then before it creates the sequence, you're going to actually have Adobe Camera Raw pop up. So if you're not familiar with this, it's the same as Lightroom. You're going to have your basic panel your tone curve, your detail, HSL, split toning, lens correction, all that good stuff. So if I wanted to, I would essentially just go through, edit this similar how you want it. Same deal, click OK. And because we checked both of those boxes, uh, Adobe After Effects is gonna synchronize that edit on every single photo. And then this is going to just move along and render However, since it is raw files, it does take a lot longer, but you know, kind of the benefit of this is you get to do it all in one place, opposed to having to go to Lightroom, export, and then reload in After Effects. So although it does take longer here, um, you know, you can start this up and then kind of just go make coffee, make a sandwich, um, and just kind of leave it be. So it's nice and pretty easy workflow there. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope this tutorial helped you guys and hopefully get you guys working on some awesome time lapses. Anyways, thanks again. Please like and subscribe for some more videos and I'll see you guys later.